spent the better part of the first year outside the Marine Corps getting chippies, LAPD. Who's, who's here law enforcement? Anybody? Former law enforcement? Okay. And I got accepted by everybody, pretty much, except for chippies. They thought I was crazy. Um, this, I failed their psych test. But I got accepted by LAPD and, and all sorts of people. Then I met a young man who was a sumo cum laude master's major at USC. Uh, from his own bootstraps, he, he came from Chicago. He was raised by his sister, his parents died, and so forth. He says, Roy, have you ever thought about getting into sales? Now, I'm all of 20 years old at the time, maybe 21 after I got in the Marine Corps. And I looked at him, you know, and my pride and my ego were hurt. He goes, oh, great. You're a sumo cum laude USC major. I'm a high school graduate, former Marine, and I got to go sell cars. I got to go pimp cars. Really? I got insulted. Mind you, I wasn't wise. I was just immature, young, and whatever. And um, he said, no, Roy, you don't get it, son. He said, people do business with people they trust and they like. That's what they do business with, OK? So it's all about relationships. So in my 21 years of age, he was trying to teach me relationship. Now, kind of hard for a New Yorker and a Marine who already has an attitude and young to teach relationship. Really? Come on. I'm not into relationships. I'm into the easy buck right now. What's going to be doing? What's it going to do for me? Right? I should have heeded him. Should have heeded him. In fact, I should have gone to work for him. He became a very young, successful builder in Orange County, South Orange County. Matter of fact, the, one of the houses I bought in Riverside is one of his tracks. Okay? And I should have heeded him. But I didn't. So you go over the years and whatnot. Sales. And I said, sales? Are you kidding me? I remember my first interview with a sales manager. His name was Ernie Albers. And Ernie Albers was a cobblestone Lucas fish telling type of salesman, if any of you have ever done that. Sits there with a cigar. I remember the days, you know. I'm like, whatever, dude. And I remember coming up, and this is how I got dressed for my first interview. I pulled out my old high school three-piece suit that I wore in New York, okay, and I went there. And I remember coming up to the guy and saying to this, to this guy like this, hey, you teach me what I need to do, and I'll make money for you. But I will not lie, cheat, or steal. I thought that was a good presentation, right? And the guy, and the guy first of all, he says, thank you. Well, young man, why don't you have a seat first? Secondly, take that chip off your shoulder. Okay. So the first lesson I learned was relationship. The second lesson I learned, though, from Ernie was this. I was selling voicemail pages and cellulars, and he goes, Roy, tell me what this pager does. How does it work? And just asking me that? I mean, don't you know? I mean, I literally asked him, don't you know? I know how to feel screw an M16 and an M60 and all sorts of funky things in an M1. Yeah, and a sniper rifle. I can do that. You tell me, you know what? And I said, I don't know. He says, you know what? I don't know either, but I don't care. Because it meets a need, though. The question is, what's that need? Can you find out from your client what that need is? And can you help him meet that need? Can you help him meet that need? But all of a sudden, it just, my brain blew up. It's no longer about the pages, the cellulars, the motor rolls, remember those big old cells? <laughs> you know? It's like, no, it was, oh, uh, father-to-be, pregnant, mom, okay, pager, boom, all this other stuff. Come on in. By the way, there's, there's iced tea and everything. So there was a need that needed to be met. And I had to go find out what that need was. Let me ask you, folks. How many in this room right now, and I'm not meant to embarrass anybody or anything like that or anything, but how many in this room are closing two deals consistently per month, two closed escrows per month? Raise your hand. Okay. How many of you would like to close consistently two deals a month? Or more? Yeah. Okay. The question is, is what are you prepared to do? I had to die to myself. I had to stop thinking and believing that I had all the answers that I knew everything. You know, I'm going to be 50 here in a year from now. I know I don't look it, right? Anyway. <laughs> Did I tell you to do stand-up sometimes? <laughs> Miserably? Um, you know, i got to shut this thing off for a minute. How does we shut? Just, how do we just close down the projector? Hey, Brian! <laughs> Let me go real quick, because that thing's annoying. Can you just turn it off? Can you just turn it off? Look on here and say, yeah, you just to power off, right? That sounds like a plan. Yeah. Not there. Not there. Maybe I'll turn my computer off. <laughs> hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Brian! <laughs> it is Brian, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah.
Is there a power button? Thank you. All right, good. There's a remote, there's a power button. That works for me. Press button for yes. Choose the button that says yes. It's the same button. Good. All right, thank you. All right, so all this to say, guys, is that I had a need. I had a need for speed. I had a need to produce. And then I went and learned what it took to produce. But I had to learn people. I had to learn about people. Oh, God, no. I'm a former That's Marine. I'm not, I've been told to do this, this, and this for the last six years of my life and telling other people to do this for six years of my life. And I don't care what your name is. I don't your last name. But I had to learn. So I learned. So here's, here's my, all this to say is one thing, guys. I've been doing this for 22 years in the mortgage industry. Um, when somebody told me I had to go work with realtors, I literally asked, what's a realtor? You know? And I got my attitudes, my preconceptions, and all this other stuff about them. Especially when, hey, Roy, you speak Spanish? Yeah. Nice tie, here's your business card, go hit Santa Ana. Because <laughs> I speak Spanish, go hit Santa Ana. Here was my first meeting at the house of a, of a Mexican American family. The homies, and when I say homies, they were homies. We're sitting all around the table, blue bandanas, whatever, and the, and the mom was over there. And I'm sitting right here in the chair that says, if you screw with my mom, we're going to kill you. Okay, that was experience number one. Experience number two, Mexican American realtor comes up to me, says, so what you going to give me? I say, what? What you going to give me? Like, what you going to pay for? Back in the old days before RESPA, right? What you going to give me? For every deal I give you, you got to give me something. Say what? Right? Bad experience. I didn't do Hispanic borrowers for like five years, six years. Okay, that was just an experience I didn't want to deal with. They get screwed by their own. They get ripped off. You know, and <laughs> I'm brown. Yeah, I'm Colombian, but you know, whatever, dude. What's up? Oh, and then realtors. Oh, you kidding me? What? Give you money for what? I'm not even making money. Bad experience. But as I grew, and I understood one thing. You're a person. You're a mom. You're a wife. You're a husband. You're a daughter. You're a son. Just like me. I'm just a poor schmuck trying to make a living. So are you. Sorry, I didn't call a bit of schmuck, did I? <laughs> um, <laughs> and I said, oh, that changed a little bit. Then you have children. That definitely changes you. Right? I'm going to start with this. My father-in-law, my former father-in-law said to me, there's two reasons why relationships go south. If you look at the, if you go drill down to those two places, you'll find out what the problem is. And he said this, whenever you have a problem in business or relation, personal relationships, ask yourself, is it about communication or money? Too much of it or too little of it? And in this business, it's all about that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. My lender's not calling me the jerk. He lied to my bar. He's not doing this. <laughs> and I'm like, commission's losing. I got to pay the mortgage. <laughs> right? Communication and money. Communication and money. Right? Here's my job as a fellow schmuck. I now just called you schmucks. <laughs> I want to help you produce. There is, I don't know how many of you are Christians in here. Anybody a Christian in here? Not just by the sheer fact of being American, but actually a Christian, born and saved again? Good. There's a, there's a term called doulos. Doulos is a bond slave. Back in the old days, a slave would be a slave, would be a slave. But if he loved his master, he would go and say, you've allowed me to be free, but I want to be your slave now. And he would stick this dowel inside his ear like this, boom. And everybody would know that he was a free slave, a slave by choice now to whatever. And all that boils down to me for me is service. I want to serve. Okay? That's my goal. I was told a couple of years ago to write up a description of the type of realtor I want to work with. <laughs> Boy, did I get bad. But one of the things that really mattered to me is, do you have a servant's heart? If you have a servant's heart, money will come. Success will come. It's plain and simple. So I'm here to figure a way to help you folks, my fellow schmucks, to produce. Okay? And I'm going to teach you how to do it. In a way, I believe I think I have some ideas in 25 years of how to do that in a service modality. Okay? How many of you like holding open houses here? <laughs> That's good. 
If I was to be a realtor right now, if I was to start being a realtor, here's two things I would do. First of all, it's all about what? Lead generating, right? Lead incubation. Does that mean you understand what lead incubation means? Okay. Lead conversion. And then tell 10 other people of what you just did, right? Did you get that last one? Tell 10 other people of what you just did. Real simple. Word of mouth. <sighs> We're all, now, let me ask you, okay, so lead gen. Open houses right now, to me, are the best lead gen. Who holds open houses? Why? To try to get clients that are buyers. Buyers. Okay. But do you really get buyers or clients at that phase? No. Not, so what do you not get? Often. You get a lead, right? You mm -hmm. get a perspective. Well, I do it for exposure. For exposing yourself? The, the house as well. I'm doing it for, for the seller and, and as well as myself. Okay. People get familiar if they see you doing open houses and your signs and your name, they become familiar with you. Yeah, Ken Loman was a pure Mike Ferry I kid when I first met him in 1989, 1990. He was an engineer from Frito Lay. And he was a Mike Ferry to those Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. Little dweeb engineer that do nothing. Did you know him? No, I know Mike Ferry. Just okay, Mike Ferry. The, the reason my hands are not going up is I'm a man, broker manager. Oh. Okay, so I can tell you about a lot of these things. And I will tell you that when I was an agent, I did open house week after week after week after week. And I was highly successful. I hated them. <laughs> but I was highly successful because people saw my name, saw me. And when they wanted to do business, they came back to me. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I exposure, I think the best way to, that she just put it, to, to, to tie it to expo exposure. Mm -hmm. Come on. If you see a schmuck working every day, day in and out, what are you going to do? I want to hire that guy because he works. He's out here. He's in my neighborhood. He knows it. Okay. If it's an exposure of anything, it's of you. The activity will expose your property. Mm. In today's market, here's what exposure does. Okay. This is what people are looking. Oreo means D-E-A-L. Mm -hmm. Means deal. That's, is it really a deal? No. Okay. So all that, that is, and, and on top of it, I'm going to share with you in a little while, people are doing their own shopping. Mm -hmm. People are doing their own looking. Mm -hmm. Right? So where do we come in? Mm -hmm. We come in differentiating ourselves from the rest of the group. Typical open house, real quick. I'll use you as an example. Come over here. And what was your name? <laughs> come on, come on, come on. What was your name? Robin. Robin, come here, Robin. I promise you, I won't hurt you, okay? Mm -hmm. But here's a typical open house. And I'm going to use you, Robin, for a moment okay. to, pr to prove something, but it's not bad because we've all done it, okay? So I'm a buyer walking into the house. God, the dawn, you got your free food and free everything, right? You know, you're really cool that way, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Robin. And who are you? Oh, I'm Robin. No, you're the realtor. I'm Robin from Coldwell Banker. Okay, good. And um, we have this house available, oh. and I'd like to look around. Oh. Sign my sign-in sheet. So, sign my sign-in sheet. Put phone number in there. Put, put phone, <laughs> phone number? Phone oh. number, email. Email, okay. Okay, yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Uh, Actually, they signed it for me. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and that's the door out, right? <laughs> no. Oh, oh, she's aggressive. Okay. Are we trapped in here? Yeah. Okay. Until you sign on the dotted line. On the line. Okay, sure. John Smith, 555555. Am I done? Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's it. Is that a real experience? Yes, yeah. Okay. There's nothing on the face of the earth. First of all, let's, let's, let's just turn it over a minute for a moment, okay? Hi, I'm Roy. And you're Robin Robin. Hey, beautiful home. Check it out. I'm not going to stalk you. I promise you. Have a nice time. If you have any questions, give me a call, okay? Just come by. Okay. Okay. Clients coming out. So, Robin, how long have you been looking for homes? Two seconds. Two seconds? Oh, you just started looking. <laughs> Did you really just start looking? Yeah. Oh, amazing. So, let me ask you, why are you thinking about buying a house right now in today's market? Actually, I'm just a neighbor, and I was just nosy at what it what they did to the house. You mean you didn't get my invitation for all the neighbors to come to the little warm-up party with the tea and the sandwiches early at 11 o'clock? No. I'm so sorry. But you know what? If you, if you want some information on this property, there's a great little website I can give you that because you want to keep your finger on the pulse of what's going on in the market. Is that what I'm hearing? Mm -hmm. You don't want to know what's going on in your marketplace? Well, there's this little website that I can send you. It's just called the Sold Home Alert. With the Sold Home Alert, you get it once a month. 
I won't stalk you, I won't bug you. But you can look and see what's going on, what's selling. As a matter of fact, if you were to look at my iPhone right now, I could show you what's selling in the house, in the area right now. Would you like that? To see what's going on in your neighborhood? No, I just want to look at this one. You just want to look at this one? Okay. And you don't want to keep your fingers on the pulse of the, of the neighborhood or what's going on? No? You don't? Maybe. Maybe? Okay. Well, here, this is. Oh, no, 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 I won't give it. Okay, now she's playing hardball with me. I get it. I get it. Okay, we'll put her. Thank you, Robin. Robin, thank you very much. You can go sit. Hey, use this chair. Yeah, just sit right here. Yeah, sit right in front. Right here. Okay, what, what, what I'm trying to show is this it's clients or open house you know, prospectees have two weapons. Two weapons. I'm just shopping. I got a realtor. Mm -hmm. You're done, right? Oh, by the way, sign this so I can realtor stalk you. Mm -hmm. Really? No, there's nothing on the face of it. So what you have to consider is, what is a value-added proposition? Who's heard that before? Value-added proposition. Mm -hmm. What type of value-added proposition do I have so that the client is encouraged to give me this information? That's what I'm going to teach you. I'm going to try to find a way to teach you how to close two or more deals a month by doing activities that can help open that. But here's, for instance, how many people do you think are shopping on Realtor.com, Zillow, Redfin, and all this other stuff? A ton, right? Oops, I left my car. That's okay. Okay. And how many of you are parents? How many of you ladies have little children, and how many of you ladies feel comfortable putting them into a public restroom? Mm -hmm. So why would you send your clients to Redfin, Zillow, Trulia, or, 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 or Realtor.com? Or for that matter, listing book. They're public websites. They have pop-ups, spam, try to sell information to people. I had a Mexican couple go and buy in La Puente, and all of a sudden she's going, shh, 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 all right, right, shh. There's that Asian realtor that's coming over here, and I, I don't know who she is, but I signed on for Redfin or Zillow, and before you know it, I got a tax to, a tax to some realtor. <laughs> all I wanted was to look at the property, but I got a tax to some realtor. And she's coming, so shh, shh, shh. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, want, I want the HBM because it's a, it's, a, it's a private website, no spam, no pop-ups or anything like that. I don't want to get popped up in a ring. They're public restrooms. How many, how many of those websites are accurate as to the status of a property pending contract or whatever? Okay. Would you like a website that whether that's scrubbed six times a day and you actually you could sit there and you know get real information? Yes. And oh by the way, the most favorite part of all, no realtor stalking. By the way, I have realtors who do that. They'll say, by the way, I will not realtor stalk you. I promise you. If you have questions, I'm there on that website, you can find out. Okay. Why is it a value added proposition? Here's, let me explain why. They're looking for properties. They're not looking for this one. They're just looking for properties. So you want to find a way to put them someplace that when you capture those names and numbers, right, you incubate them. Because by the way, does everybody know that a buyer has, he speaks to 17 agents before he pulled, before he pulls the trigger. What do you think he's doing between point, realtor number one and realtor number 17? Looking, educating himself, going on Zillow and Zippo, right? Stroking everybody. Stroking everybody. Okay. <laughs> Back to the bar thing again, aren't you? Okay. Um, so, <laughs> no, that was a car sale. That was a car sale in the park. Okay, got it. Um, so they're, they're, they're looking, but do you know what they're looking at? Do you have the fishbowl? Can you see somebody that says, been looking at 35 properties? Been in the market through seven times, looked at a map 14 times, looked at the mortgage calculator two times. Okay, I'm a former marine, former sniper. Okay, and my job is I have what's called a rat. Okay, a rat is small enough, ferocious enough, vicious enough to go anywhere and anywhere and sneak and sneak and sneak. I'm sneaky sneaky. Remember that movie? Sneaky sneaky. I'm sneaky sneaky. But for me, sneaky sneaky is all about intel. I need intel. If I don't have good intel. I'm going into danger zones, okay? But it's all about intel. Be able to look at something and go, oh, Mr. Jordan Johnson has been looking at 15 properties. Look at the type of properties he's been looking at. Oh, okay. Yeah. And having those kind of disciplines to do that, okay? If I was to become a realtor, I would hold three open houses per week, one in the weekday doing uh, soccer mom time and near apartments, near nice apartments, because those people are looking to be homeowners at some point or another. That's why they're living in that neighborhood, but they can't afford it at this time. Okay? And two of those, and then I would hold an open house in which I would have something to give the client, and that something is information and intel into the current market. I know you're kind of all going, what the heck are you still talking about, boy? I want to generate leads for you. I want to help you generate leads right now. Leads. 
A lead is a person who has an intent and a desire to buy something. The problem with that lead at this point in time is you don't know what kind of lead it is. An A lead is somebody who has a time frame, been qualified, and the ability to do so. Right? Can you really, do you honestly, don't get me wrong, Robin, okay? But can you honestly expect to believe that there's some karma energy in you that's going to make this individual give you all that information, trust you with that, and say, you're going to be my realtor to help me do this? Mm -hmm. I used to have an ego, okay? <laughs> but I let God in, so I didn't ease him out anymore, you know? But ah, I'm not that good, okay? And so you have to be prepared to turn it on them. Turn it on them. I see you looking for properties. Do you like the deals? I had this little blonde in Corona Del Mar. I kid you not, a little blonde girl came out of USC, all happy to be a realtor, and my parents own money and they live in Corona Del Mar. You know, I'm going to get money just from server influence, right? She went to one of my, my studies or whatever. She started holding open houses. Here's the funniest part. She sat there in Costa Mesa one time, and there's this road, or Tustin. This road just goes, and this house is right here. This guy, she put up the sign, the HBM signs, the boss unplugged, all this other stuff that you'll know, learn about. Um, and she put it up there, and this guy drove up in a Mercedes and goes, I want the free list of uh, REOs. I want the free list of REOs. And, and, and she's going, uh, yeah, okay, but it's on a website. It's a by invitation only website. It's for you, you know, but it's private. And, but you, I need your name and I'm in your social. Oh, fine. Because the email just whatever. Go to Montebello, Los Angeles County, some areas. You see some companies out there that they forget put Remax or Coldwell Banker. All they got is this big, huge sign that says what? REO. Free list of REOs. Mm -hmm. See? That's what they're looking for. They don't want you for anything else right now but free information. Right? You're the human yellow pages at this juncture. Well, divert that a little bit over here. Say, yeah, I'll give you the inside scoop. I got a guy by the name of Guy Schmutz. Yes, that's his name, Guy Schmutz. He's a realtor in Orange County, Guy Schmutz. I, 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 every time I call him, I say, Guy. I know Guy. <laughs> it's like one of those names, you know, Richard. Anyway, um, <laughs> somebody got that one fast, didn't you? <laughs> anyway, so it's like, and he, this is what he tells them. This is where the banks all put their properties. This is where they all park them. If you want the inside scoop on pre-list and pre-foreclosures, this is where you go. Is he telling the truth? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Okay? Yeah, slight deviation, but he's telling the truth. That's, is, what, are the, what is the buyer looking for anyway? Where are the banks putting properties on? Where are the deals? Right? Right. Well, they have a guy named Schmutz would lie anyway. So. Exactly, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Can I use you at my next presentation, please? <laughs> Thank you. you and Robin, okay, we're a pair now. But, okay, so, you know, but that's what they want. Now, how easy is that? By the way, would you like the inside scoop onto what's going on in the real estate market right now? Would you like pre-listing foreclosures? Okay, well, it's a by invitation only website. What do you mean by that? It's safe and secure, you know, not a public restroom? Okay, what do I need to do? Name, number, email. I've had people at open houses, kid you not, kid you not. I'm doing the presentation on one person individual right here, and they're going, what can I put my information? When was the last time you had somebody who wanted to sign your registry? It stood in line wanting to sign. I've had to go like this. Oh, here, 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 here. And pass out my little survey sheets and have them fill out right there. Okay? Would you like that kind of dynamic at your open house? You would? We'll do that then. All right. So what I've basically spoken about is the need for speed, the need to meet a need for somebody. In this market right now, the need is they want information, they want it quick, and they don't want you to bug them. That's the need, plain and simple. Give it to me quickly, package it up, and get away from me. I don't want to hear your sales spiel. I don't want you to sell me nothing. Okay? But have you sold them something? Very powerful. You've met their need. You've met their need. Then you step back and watch. I had a what we call an adversarial cross-qualification the other day. An adversarial cross-qualification, by the way, Prospect Mortgage, Prospect Mortgage, is one of the largest single independently held companies in the United States right now. We are, we are funded and subsidized and backed by a private equity fund that only deals in pharmaceuticals, very conservative. We've been from Marina Mortgage Plaza, some of you old guys may know remember Marina Mortgage was, Plaza and so far. American Home Mortgage, we were them, NAMZ. We were bought by IndyMac Bank and then IndyMac Bank got closed too. You know, before you know it, we're a great retail company. We've niched asset managers. What does that mean? Asset managers want their properties to sell quickly. 
and they don't want some bogus broker, loan officer, realtor, and everybody else trying to put it off and the deal's not going to close. So guess what my great job is? I told them I have to pre pre approve with you, even though my bars worked already with Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase and City, and Juan Pinto, a broker. How many of you had had to do that? Okay. Most adversarial, John Taranti, most adversarial cross qualification I've ever had. Yeah, you guys are jerks. You can't do this. This isn't legal. I'm with Bank of America. Yeah, you closed loans in 60 days or you know more. Anyway, sorry. Did I say that bad? I'm sorry. No, you said okay. you're too nice. Okay. Um, so it's like. I said, John, I'm sorry, bro. I gotta do this. It's my job. You probably won't give me the loan, but I gotta sit here for 30 minutes of my lifetime and I can spend it at the beach surfing. But I'm gonna do this with you. Mm -hmm. Right? Didn't get the house. Went on my hyperlink afterwards. Called me a year later. Hey, Roy, want to buy a house? That's great. I'm not a realtor. I'm a law officer. Remember? You hated me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I clicked on that hyperlink, man. And I started looking at properties and it's great. I mean, up to the moment, up to the date, blah, 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 blah. It was great. Now, well, where's your realtor? Oh, I fired that jerk a year ago. Deal done, two homes later, and I referred him to, a, to, a, to, a, to an agent locally. You just refer him to Schmutz? To Schmutz. <laughs> Schmutz, yes. Because he's a fellow schmuck. But I'll fuck. Thank you. Uh, you coming too? On the tour? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, you know, uh, at the end of the day, I left him alone with that. He found a need in it. He found it. It was soft. And I saw him. I mean, I, I saw him looking. I, I'm not talking to him. I'm not bugging him at all. You know, I don't want to deal with that. How many of you have stickies? I mean, let me ask you, how many of you have more than 20 leads right now somewhere in a book, in a database, whatever? How many? Okay. How many of you religiously are really following up with them on a monthly basis or on a weekly basis or have any plan whatsoever? Daily. That's desperate. By the way, I relate. I relate. Okay? I relate. The beauty of being able to give somebody and step away and let them reach out to you is awesome. I had a lady the other day, Gus Banuelos is the realtor down in Montebello. Some of you know the guy, top producer back in the day. She goes over and she says, well, yeah, he gave me this website. It's great. I'm looking at it, but it's tied to you, a lender. I don't really need a lender. I'm going through NACA. Mm -hmm. It's NACA. So oh. First time buyer program. In the United. I have no idea what it is. NACA. NACA on this. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This was, not, this was on the 19th of July. So I said, hey, no worries. My job is just to show you how the website works. Right. On the 25th, a phone call. Roy, can you do a chadap behind a 2 or 3K? Now, mind you, did I call it once? No. Can I do a chadap behind a 2 or 3K? Now, let me explain why. I'll explain in a minute. Remind me, 2 or 3K renovation, Gus Bagnolos. I said, um, uh, no, you can't. No. Oh. Three more, four more questions later, she picked my brain. And I went for the shot a little bit, just a little shot. Well, oh, would you mind if I show you what your buying power looks like? I'd like to help you with that. You know. No, 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 no. I mean, you answered some of my questions. I'm fine. Click. 125, that happened. 315, I get a call. You know what? My husband and I do really want to know what our buying power looks like in today's marketplace. 259. App taken, communication dead, Gus got it. Gus is there in the mix of this, you know. How would you like to have an extension one, two, three while you're building your vertical company, okay? Your lender on extension one, two, three. Your escrow on extension four, five, six, right? Each one of your business people, folks, align yourselves as such. Think of yourselves as such, okay? But make sure that partner you use is a good partner who's responsive on time and communicates constantly, right? Because what are the two major causes of most problems? Communication and money. Too much of it, too little bit, right? Okay. She's about to go into escrow in about 35 days because they're getting some money or whatever like that. Now, mind you, oh, I talked to her twice, but she's been on the website since the seventh, since the whatever, the 19th <coughs> of July. Now, the, is that a lead that's working? Mm -hmm. I mean, is that a lead that's working? Did I have to call every day? I mean, don't get me wrong, I do. Did I have to call her every day? No. She's just right there. Your face is right there. That's my realtor expert. That's my home officer expert. Mm -hmm. I'll pick their brains. I don't care. You know, it's not cost to me anything. Right? Okay? That's what the, the website provides. Back to Gus Bunyan. Okay, so now, what I want to help you guys do is through activities like open houses, capture more leads that want to be captured, okay, and show you how to convert those leads more effectively and efficiently for real money and real deals. 
That's so far what I want to do. Number one. Number two, the niches, the riches are in the niches. The riches are in the niches. Man, it's hot in here. Or is it just me? No, it's hot. It's hot here. Can somebody open that back door just so that we can? Yeah. All right. Can you open that back door? Now, the niches are in the riches. How many of you heard this before? What was his name? My name Mike. 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 Yes, sir. I'm Roy Sorrow with Banana Real Estate. I'm sorry, Banana, Banana, Republic. Banana, yeah, Banana Republic Lending. And by the way, here's some great rates and some great loans, and, and, and I would love for you to give me a deal. Yourselves are any different? Not at I can sell your home. Shh. Yeah, line up, buddy. <laughs> okay? We gotta find a way to differentiate ourselves, folks. Here's where Roy differentiates himself. I put myself in your shoes. I have door knocked. I have prospect expires solicited for sale by owners, physicals, everything out there. I'm a Mike Ferry Act, former Mike Ferry so I do that. That's part of my livelihood. That's how I do business, okay? Mm. I look at loan products like programs that you can help your client get what he wants. It's easy to say, this first time buyer program, talk to my lender. <coughs> no, 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 no. Here's a, here's a different scenario. I love holding crappy homes open. When I say crappy, you should see a picture of this one property I held open the other day. I literally had to breathe through my mouth and it still sucked. Okay? <laughs> But then again, I was holding it outside, but I still had to walk inside every once in a while, right? Mm -hmm. Nasty out. I love it. I love it. Why? Because the client comes in. How many clients have you seen that they walk into an open house and go like this? And you ask them, by the way, do you like the neighborhood? Oh, yeah, I love the neighborhood. Because what's, what's one of the five questions that Mike Ferry says? How long have you, when do you plan on moving? How long have you lived at this address? What made you move into the neighborhood? If you were to move, where would you move again? Right? One of those questions is, what made you look in this area? Why are you looking in this area, right? So you ask the client, he says, hey, Mr. Client, um, why are you looking at this piece of crap? You know, my cousin lives right down the street, the school district's great, you know, and I love it, and everything like that, you know? Oh, so you love the neighborhood, huh? Yeah. And why are you making a look at this box? Well, it's a one-story, one-level, I love it, you know, my arthritis and everything, I just love it, I love it. Great. Have you seen the inside? <laughs> That's crap. It's disgusting. Yeah, I want you to close your eyes for a moment. Is what I tell the client. Why don't you close your eyes? Why don't you do that kitchen? Well, I put this, I put that, I put that. Would you paint it? Absolutely. Paint. Carpet? Okay. Different appliances? Oh, yeah, that runs. It gives you about $20,000. I think so. Hold on, I barely have time painting. <laughs> right? Well, whatever I can show you a program in a way that you can qualify to include both your, your buying this house and repairing this house and making it look the way you want to make it. Would you be interested in that? Would you be interested in that? Okay, good. By the way, here's the different type of renovation programs out there that you may or may not qualify for. So I'm just going to give you that with that. You know, have a good day, by the way. And if you want to see that, that website for that special website where you look at more crappy properties, okay? What do you think that person's going to do when they walk to, they're not buying this crappy property, but they're going to find a crappy property because nine out of 10 properties out there are what? Okay. Thank you. Okay? So they're going to find that. And they're going to go, what did, I'm sorry, your name? She's Jan. She wanted to open it's hot. It's hot. And I said, you know, what did, what, what, did, what did Sheila, that gal, Sheila, didn't she tell us about this program where I can fix this house meeting so I don't have to have a honeydew list this long and a 15% or 60% Home Depot Lowe's card to work with? Right? I can close this deal in 45 days or less? And if my lender doesn't close in 45 days, he'll pay a $500 per diem? How many are listing agents here? How many would like to see an offer that goes in like this? Mr. Seller, we understand what as is means. We don't care that FHA appraisal will call out anything. We won't call you for that. We got it handled. Just give us 45 days, and if we don't, my lender will pay you $500 per diem. If you saw a listing agent, if you walked in on that one, would you, again, today's REO agents is like, Right? Offers look like this, the end, right? Which one would you put right in front of you? Right? 
Do you feel different than the average realtor at this moment? Do you feel empowered to do that different approach? Because if not, you can walk out the door. Or you can stay here and make that difference now. Nine out of every FHA loan done on the East Coast is done 2 or 3K. You're a consultant now. I used to be a builder rep. Build a loan officer on a track. Okay? Think about this for a second. Guy walks in with wife and children, and they're looking at, you know, lots. Not even looking at a built house and a model. Nine out of ten times, guess where the wife spent her time in? The design center. While the guy's outside going like this. <laughs> you know, you know, I gotta go buy a tool belt. I bought a tool belt one day. I didn't know till now. I bought it. My wife laughed the other day because the label was still on it. This was 11 years ago, guys. I am not a fixer-upper guy, okay? <laughs> but you know, poor guys are sitting there like that, right? And so it's like, hmm. But what were they doing? They were looking at how they wanted to build their home, and they bought a home without even it being built. I mean, how phenomenal is that? Perception, 100% reality in their brain, right? That's what you got to do. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. This house sucks. <laughs> Could you imagine saying that to a buyer? What? By the way, this house, look at that. It's crappy. I, I'm going to tell you what's wrong with this already, okay? <laughs> Could you imagine that dynamic? That's refreshing, isn't it? Instead of, oh, yeah, I painted over here and it looks kind of okay, but you know, I'm going to put some flowers over there. Right? This place sucks. <laughs> but I'm going to show you how to look good. Right? Is he really filming me on this? Oh, my heavens. Please, this better not go YouTube. Anyway, it will. so I will go viral. Okay. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> anyway, um, there's a different approach. Now you become a consultant. While every other Tom, Dick, and Harry realtor is doing this. Where's my cords on my finger? You're going. By the way, can I help you change that up a little bit? By the way, I never say loan programs. I never say pre-qualify. I never say you know. I said there's a program out there that could probably help you get into this property. Would you be interested in finding out what that program is? Would you like a program that helps you do this? Gus Bagnuolo is in Orange County, in, 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 in the LA area there. Guy closes about 10 units a month, listings, uh, uh, sells, sides, and 10. Here's his gig. He takes everybody the crappiest property in the neighborhood, 170000 And he says, now let me ask you, do you want to buy this property when somebody's selling it to you for 200000 Or do you want to buy it when it's one hundred seventy? Because I'm going to grab this property, I'm going to put 10, 15,000 into it and flip it back to you at 20% above margin. So which do you want to do? Do you want to be the sharp buyer or do you want to be the sucker who takes it at 20% over because somebody just put new paint and carpet in it? Tracking? So it's, <laughs> this is what he does. I kid you not. And he owns his own construction company, so go figure. He's got, yeah. I, I, almost, I almost think with you guys, you guys got to start thinking like your, these other things because these other things will help you think. I'm sorry, step out. Step out, okay. Does anybody want any tea? Honestly, come on, I've talked enough. Does anyone want any tea? Take a tea break, really quick? Right, <laughs> tea. I'll take a tea. <laughs> I'll take a tea. I'm definitely taking you on tour, bro. Okay. All right, yes. Mm. By all means. You see, believe it or not, this tea right here, who, who just had lunch today? Okay. I'm getting to that age, I don't know what age that is, but it's some age. Where all of a sudden, anything I eat, mm -hmm. anything, mm -hmm. you know, and it hurts. And, oh, and, and I love my wife to death. She's from Canada, British Columbia. And, oh my God, she can, I have to say this, there's no other way to say it. She can serve poop and I eat it. She's that good. I love her. She's mm -hmm. that good at eating and making food. Just, and nothing bad. Well, it's all good stuff. So this is peppermint tea from the baggies. Peppermint tea. And every night she feeds me this stuff, I'm like, to gorging myself on steak and whatever it is she makes with me. By the way, try out Traeger barbecues. You can grab a frozen breast, you know, like this baby right here, frozen spec, and defrost it a little bit, stick it in there, it'll come out juicy. I mean, I've always wanted to do that. I can do it. Traeger, wood pellets, phenomenal. Uh, yes, I want a part of that, part of that business. Yeah, too. thighs as well, or just breasts? Everything, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thighs, breasts. Yeah. I just fell into that one. <laughs> I'm not that quick, by the way, sometimes. <laughs> uh, so anyway, there's a niche. Renovation. Renovation. 
So when somebody says to you, yeah, I've just been living in these properties, ah, oh, the appraisal fell through, you'll hear all this stuff, right? You'll hear the only answer I ever want to hear a customer say to me that say no to is this one. By the way, is a current realtor that you're working with told you about these things? That's the only no answer I want to hear out of a customer. All right? Another niche. Any questions on the renovation niche? Renovation niche? No? Okay. Home path. Who knows home path? We all do, right? Oh, plants, right? Good. Home path properties, right? How many people have said, huh? if you can, you can give a dime, how many people have said, oh, I lost, it. I lost it because somebody overbid us, or I lost it because the investors bought it, right? All these rationales, right? What do you know about home path loans? Anybody? Quickly? No appraisal? Right there. No appraisal. You're bidding against five, ten people. Everybody's going with an FHA loan and a home path loan, and there's one home path offer at twenty, thirty thousand dollars higher than what it is, and your buyer feels comfortable with that, right? Who's getting it? The home path loan. Is that a little insight you can help share with your clients out there? By the way, you might want to check out because how many people? Come on, how many agents are out there sitting there going have some agenda with their listing agent? Not, it's not bad, but they want to sell their homes, their property. I send everybody to HomePath.com. I have agents who send everybody to HomePath.com. Investors, 10% down, no MI, no mortgage insurance, no appraisal? You following me? I want you to think like your buyers. Forget who you are and teach them, educate them. Give them the leads, the QA, hey, check this out. You know, has your agent told you about that? No. Most people here, at most open houses, like right now you're gonna ask me for my business cards, right? Right? It's a trick I do. Well, some of you will. <laughs> Dang, man. You're hard. Anyway, so they asked me for they asked me for my business card. And I said, you know what? Ten crane any. Well, I want some more information on this. Sign on the dotted line. <laughs> right? I never pass out a card. I have not passed out a card, you guys know when. Because they want to talk to me. You have to make them want to talk to you. But you gotta give them something. You gotta educate them. Something of value. Okay? How many of you would actually like to get involved with that platform of we call boss? And let me explain what boss is. Now I can hand out the paperwork. <coughs> By the way, I never hand out paperwork. At the beginning of the presentation, just trick number one. <laughs> By the way, this is all natural, no coffee. <laughs> or any other funny stuff. Peppermint tea. Cover me a band -band. Huh? Peppermint tea. Peppermint tea. Is that what it is? No, but it's decaffeinated. Oh, is it? Yeah, I think so. I hope so. Yeah. And the bowl, oh, yeah, the bowl has got it's home baked granola bars, but I'm telling you, huh? Yeah. Now we know where the energy's coming from. <laughs> Have a taste of it and tell, tell, the, tell the rest of the kids what it tastes like. Do I need a prescription for that? <laughs> Have some. Go, go. I can get How's it taste? On the Delicious. Delicious. So that's my wife. Gotta love her. Bless her, Bless her heart. Everything's natural. Boss! Broker open house sales system. How many of you have seen the black and yellow, black and yellow? Mm -hmm. Nobody's been exposed to black and yellow? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the 1920s, or in the Great Depression, farms in the Midwest, when there was an auction, believe it or not, black and yellow, for some reason, was a color that they used to say it was an auction. Mm -hmm. And now one of the largest auction companies in the country, formerly known as REDC, if anybody remembers, mm -hmm. now they're auction.com, I have no idea, probably Jeff screwed somebody over to get into the government, so he got to create a new name. <laughs> You know who Jeff Friedman is? He's, he's his character. Anyway, um, so black and yellow for some reason signified, I mean, black and yellow for me signified like cockroach killer. Remember the old raid or whatever yeah. it was? It was like, right, like, stay away. Well, but black and yellow in today's market, this is what it means. There's a deal. I smell blood. There's a deal. I gotta go after it. I gotta go after it, right? Yeah. That's what that is, okay? Boss is broker open house sales system. We actually help you, fellow schmucks, okay? Create an, a, a dynamic of an open house that will generate a lot more traffic than you know, than you can handle. Mm -hmm. It's actually relative to how many black and yellow signs we put out. If I put out 15 signs, I for sure am going to get 15 people. 
It's the weirdest thing. Mm -hmm. It's better than this. Hi, I'm Susie Q. Cole, banker. <laughs> like what? That's going to sell something? We did a study one time. It was a real snooty Coldwell Banker, no, Prudential realtor up in Northern California. She goes, I'll never put that on my, it's all about me. Mm. We did a study. We held an open house. She said, just do me a favor. You don't have to show up at the open house. We'll do it. Mm. We did the open house. Then we did a little survey. She showed up. We put her signs, and we put the black and yellow. We asked people how they got to the property. The black and yellow, one, older woman, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. four to one. Okay, she had a pretty face, you know, faced mm -hmm. up, photoshopped, right? Mm -hmm. huh? What the heck, over Remax, what? All they're doing is, where's the deal, where's the deal? That's what they're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. That's what boss is, goes. That's what boss is. We teach you how to do all these things, create open houses, create an event around it. How many of you have ever been open? Well, when tracks were open, you know, they're slowly coming in. Builders, right? It's a grand event. Everything's a grand event, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. almost like that. What's that? Furniture stores do it, don't they? It's a sale. We're closing out, right? Mm -hmm. They've been closing out for three years, man. Mm -hmm. Okay? But believe it or not, a simple marketing tactic like that works. It works. An event. We, I mean, I've sat there with a, we do a pop-up, you know, what's it called, the pull-up, the thingy? What's the canopy. Yeah, the canopy. Canopy and a table up front. Out front. With a big sign that says, you know, free list of REOs, or free list of REOs, contact us, or, you know, whatever. Get your free list of REOs. People just show up to get the free list of REOs. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a different shift on what you're doing right now. Sitting inside of a hot house or whatever. Some people, I've seen people just turn around and bring, you know, one of those coolers. I'll just stop by for the drink. My old days in lemonade. <laughs> Ten cents, please. <laughs> you know? So, and that's what we do. Because the, the idea here, guys, is this. Each one of you out of an open house, if you do two open houses per week, you should generate at the very least, at least 30 leads. That's 30 people that are going to sign on to HBM who you will capture and incubate and develop a relationship with over the next 30 to 60 or 90 days. That's the goal. Do you think if you do the math simply, 30 of those people sitting in there, okay? Do the math. At 20, a 10% capture, how many escrows will you open in the next 30 to 60 days? At the very least? At the very least, one. And two ready to write an offer, right? That's how you get to two deals a month. It's a numbers game. And differentiating yourself from the rest of the pack, the rest of the crowd. Any questions? <sighs> That's bad when there's no questions. So I'm waiting to hear about boss. Huh? I'm waiting to hear about No, boss, but like I said, if somebody wants, okay, here, okay, good. Here's what uh, we're going to talk about now real quick, and I'm out the door. There's something called Operation Paragon Real Estate, okay? Um, I only brought 10 because I only thought 10 people would be interested. So here's my question. Actually, here's my question, and it's an honest question, right? Because you're a salesperson, you can appreciate this. How many of you, seriously, and I really want you to dig deep inside of you, because if you're just going to say, look, bro, dude, I'm happy doing one every other month of the deal. I came here because it was free food or something like that. Whatever, you know, I see a schmuck, they said it was a comedian. And, you know, it's like, whatever, all right? I get it. But how many of you are serious about your business and wanting to raise the level of your business to at least one extra deal a month? Okay. All right, good. How many of you are prepared to work? Okay, that's honest. I love honesty. So those people can stay in the room. Those that don't want to do it, it's okay. It was nice meeting you all. I am a good lender. Trust me. I close deals fast. I'm really good at what I do, and I thank you for your time. And those that do, you can stay here, and we'll talk about Paragon. Yeah, happy to. I was going to offer. Want me to make some more coffee? Coffee. Well, actually, no, because I just want to give this to the people who want to stay in the room. Got it. Yeah. Did you say you're a direct lender? Yes, sir. We're the largest direct lender in the United States. Everything. I'm a former Marine, so yes. By the way, I want to give you. I want to give you. All right. If I leave you with anything, this is what I want to leave you with. Okay. Remember what I said about doulos, about servanthood, right? I was the number one CalPERS CalSTRS lender in the United States, in California back in the late 90s, early twos, okay? 
who, who knows about CalPERS? And CalSTRS, Cal there's two entities. And CalSTRS, correct. They had their own little loan, okay? And there was a benefit, okay? Here I am driving from Eureka to San Diego almost every week, doing chippy shows, Sacramento Chips, uh, PD, legislative, superintendents, Jack O'Connell, all this other stuff, doing these events, okay? I was like John the Baptist in the wilderness. The Molden office were doing it at all, oh, okay? I even had a website when the website came out, firstman.com. I got stopped on the 101 in Santa Maria and in Pasadena twice by chippies, okay? And twice they saw firstman.com and they saw my green backpack Marine Corps. Mm, good. It works. And um, I said, you the firstman? They went, yeah. Hey, you came to my station last time. You did a study on the firstman. Look, get out of here. Don't want to see you again. Two times, I kid you not. I paid for it on the other way back to Santa Maria with a cop that was really pissed off. Oh, you didn't get the lawn done? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, all this to say, take this idea and run with it, folks. I'm telling you, it works. The next cop, teacher, fireman, whatever you meet, and you intend to do a deal with them, you want to list their properties, this is what you tell them. I will contribute 25% of my commission to your closing cost, to whatever it is, to you, Mr. Hero, out of thanks for you, for doing business, for being a hero. I won't see you going crazy, dude. I'm sorry, if I gave you a deal right now, right, that's going to close escrow, would you pay me 25% for fee? Mm -hmm. Right? Standard, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Would that go viral inside of a school district? You're thinking about talking to Joe Schmuckatelli over here who's doing the, you know, real estate? you got to talk to this guy. He, 25% of his commission went straight to my closing cost. For a listing, 25% of my commission went to pay for that buyer's closing cost that the buyer's asking to pay for me that i got to pay. He paid it for me. <clears throat> By the way, it's viral on the East Coast right now in the Midwest. I don't know what it is about these the East Coasters. Maybe it's the sun out here. We're just too chill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that race. <laughs> Thank God I didn't stay, though. Thank God I didn't stay. Um, okay? So there's an idea, folks. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It will go viral. It will go viral. Okay? 25% okay. of your commission goes to that transaction to that buyer. Okay? All right. Those people that decided to stay and they want to go and get involved with Boss and HBM and be interested in what Paragon Real Estate means, stay. Mm -hmm. And those that don't, don't. I'll give you three seconds. One, two, three. Oh. All right. You're very welcome. All right. Thank you. And I know there's some of you here that are just staying. I didn't see more hands than you here. I know there's some of you that are staying in here that are going, well, Ryan, I still want to know what the heck you're talking about. Paragon real estate, really, dude? Paragon this. Anyway, pass that up real quick. Hey Roy, is this picture the one that you did with your job interview with your high school suit? No. It's the funniest thing, guys. I came to find the Lord when I finally realized I didn't have all the answers. That picture, I kept it only for one reason, not because I look good or anything like that, which I really do, don't I? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you want to make copies of that one now is a good idea. Okay. That picture was the day that I actually found out that my wife was for sure going to divorce me and she was basically going to rip my whole heart and my whole family apart. Mm -hmm. And I remember having to go to that because my team at the time said, we got a team picture and we got to go take pictures, right? And I just remember sitting there having to smile while my whole world was ripped apart, okay? Literally. And by the way, my fault, okay? My fault. But still, I mean, come on, dude, really? <laughs> you know, and I had to sit there and put that smile on. And, I, and, I, and every time I look at that picture, it humbles me because it makes me realize who I owe everything to. This picture here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just, yeah. <laughs> I had a ton of other pictures, you know, I could have done, but that one, it just it stuck to me because that very day, I mean, literally. And nobody knew, nobody knew, you know, I just, you know, you try to keep it to yourself. And, but, uh, yeah. So it reminds me of a lot of things. It reminds me of my loss, but it reminds me of my gain. I gained a relationship with my Lord Jesus Christ, you know, that is never going to go away.
Amen. Amen. So, yeah, that's what that picture is. <laughs> a friend of mine says, well, it doesn't show the bald spot you currently have now in your head. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Paragon. Let me explain what paragon is. Uh, there's some term in, that's okay. There's some term in the diamond industry. I have no idea. Um, did you get uh, there's, there's some term in Paragon that, that Paragon is like the ultimate diamond or the ultimate whatever. So that's, that's what this is all about. Uh, if you don't know Prospect Mortgage, I'm telling you, if you don't like my style, I get it. There's a lot of other prospect loan officers, okay? Really, if I was going to become a realtor, which by the way, I'm really this close. I'm really this close to becoming a broker, okay? That close. I kid you not, after 22 years. Because I'm just tired. I, I, I'm, gonna be, I'm, I'm being candid. I'm tired. Tired of coming into offices like this, teaching somebody, really giving my all to people, and not getting one deal out of it. Not to say that I expect it, but come on, let's get real, guys. You know, one deal for the schmuck who just spend a little time giving me some ideas? You know, you want me to do big? You know what I mean? So anyway, I, I'm just getting tired. You know, I teach, I teach, I teach, I educate, and nothing's coming back for some reason, you know? I mean, I, I, I get off on teaching people to be successful. Steven Amaya went into my office, did it. He's all excited. He's like, yeah, I'm going to do it. I think he's what? Producing now like five deals? Is it because of what I did? No, I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe? Did I drop something in his head? I don't know. I know for a fact he hasn't called me. He's pissed off at me. And I'm being candid. I don't know why. I'll figure it out. I'll talk to him. Paragon is basically, what is the goal of Paragon Real Estate? The goal of Paragon is to provide tools and training so agents can reach their full professional potential. The program will also help each real estate agent increase their production through proven strategies. How long is the Paragon program? It is a 60-day training program. So yes, just like my wife and I, we just joined Insanity, and we are just terrible at it. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Insanity? Oh, my goodness. Dude! <laughs> anyway, that's just wrong. Yeah, it's, yeah it makes boot camp look way easy. Actually, he's a former yeah. SEAL. So uh, I get him. Um, so it's a 60-day program. During that time, we do activities that drive more business. Once the training is over, you will not be required to submit reports to the Paragon Trainer. Mm -hmm. Paragon Trainer agent will continue to work close to more, to close more transactions. What's the goal? To teach you tools and discipline needed to be successful and build a strong partnership. Da, 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 da. And believe it or not, it's eight weeks. And first week, we talk about business plans. We talk about time blocking. Because if you don't have a map, who has a business plan here, by the way? Really, be honest, who has a business plan? How many deals do you have to close per month to be on track? In my head, I think it came out to about four. How many people do you have to talk to or generate in terms of leads in order to close four? I don't remember. But it's not written out right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is what I'm trying to get at. I know my numbers. I know how many people I need to talk to. Okay? Can you spout them off like that? Can you know that? Because, see, every day I go home, if I didn't meet those numbers, something's wrong. Now, mind you, at 5 o'clock when I go home to dinner, nothing's wrong. I mean, with my family, my God, my food, woohoo! Next day, I'm ready to go. Okay? You have, in order, you know, the, the saying is if, if, if you don't know where you're going, you don't get there. Mm -hmm. And that's what a business plan is, folks. And you don't have to really too, too much into it. Okay? And what's time blocking? How many people have this excuse? I don't have enough time. You're assigned time. You're assigned time. Very good. Mm -hmm. Are you a mother? What, how old is your youngest or your oldest? Uh, my oldest is 31. And your? The youngest is uh, 27. <laughs> <laughs> Philippines, what were you, a young 12-year-old bride? What's wrong with you? My husband robbed me from the crib. Tell you what, robbed from the crib. Like he was waiting like this. And, yep, she's ready. <laughs> okay. All righty. So let me ask you. I mean, if your daughter, is it a daughter? Yes. Youngest daughter. If your daughter had an event, her first ballet recital, Right? First. Dressed up everything. Right? And it's at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. But you got a listing appointment. Which would you take? Family comes first, right? You're asking me or you're telling me? <laughs> I'm telling you. Okay. So did you block out that time to do it? Yes. You have to figure out what's important in your life. Mm -hmm. What is important in your life? In your business life, what's important? What activities are important? What activities must be done to make that happen, right? That's what time blocking is, folks. Mm. Ken Loman, 6.30 in the morning. I know, because I would be there at 5.30, okay? In Rancho Cucamonga. 
Back in the day, the guy would close 25 to 30 transactions <laughs> at 120,000. <000. laughs> All right, I mean, it was Ratchet Kumanga, okay, really? <laughs> okay, 630, he had already pulled just listed for sale by owners, expired, God knows what else, and he's already designed in whatever. Guy. Century 21 Masters, this one kid, he told, what's his name, to give him a closet. Boom. Scripts. Lists. Shh. Would not leave there until he had three appointments. Three, three appointments. Oh, we all like that? No, I don't think so. I like to go surf between around 5.30 and 7.30, 9.30. I surf, you know, and then I come back and phew, chill, have a breakfast, and then go do my business. Okay? But I'm also more efficient. I don't, I, I don't have a paper office. So everything's electronic, virtual, whatever. Time blocking is putting in there what you believe is a high payoff activity for your life. That's it.